And welcome to my channel. I have three lovely card stacks to choose from here. I have the moon, the cats, and the queen. This reading is regard in regards to whatever current connection you're inquiring about, right? So if you want to know what is this connection, what is it all about? Then if you're concerned about like what is the lesson behind it, right? Like why is this happening? So what's the lesson here? What am I meant to learn from this all? And then the last part of it is going to tap into what to do about it, how to approach it, right? So before I get started, I just want to remind everybody these are general readings. They're not going to resonate with everybody watching, although I do hope that they manage to reach who they need to, right? Um, so you can always pick more than one stack if you feel led to, you know, pick one, two, watch all three. That's up to you. It's really whatever you feel led to do. And then consider that because we're asking about another person or the dynamic of a situation, consider these readings can be you know role reversed I guess or vice versa so there could be tidbits of it that resonate more for you and then there's other tidbits that resonate more for the other person in regards to what's happening and it's really just based on how you interpret it because only you know your situation right so these are also timeless so it's really whenever the universe nudges you to watch that is when the appropriate time is okay so I'm gonna move Stack number two and three out of the way. So the cats, I'm gonna put off to the side. And I'm gonna put the queen off to the side. We'll get back to those later, but I'm gonna start with the moon. And I have this card here. I'm going to incorporate that into the reading as we go along. Um, that's a number 33, so I would maybe consider that being a master number to consider looking that up. Check out uh, angel numbers on Google and see how that number resonates to you if you pick this deck. So this is your tarot. I'm gonna push that off to the side. I'll get back to that in a minute, but I wanna start with the connection. So because we're asking about the connection, first I'm gonna grab these Romance Angel cards here and see if we can get some information on that. So stack number one viewers, what is this connection all about, okay? That you're experiencing right now and that you're watching this video inquiring about. So what is this connection between you and the other person? What is the dynamic here in regards to this connection? Very soon, clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now. So maybe there's a decision or something you have to decide about this connection in some way, right? Maybe you're breaking your head over it. I don't know why I heard that. Maybe you're trying to figure it out. Maybe you're not sure which way to go with this connection. Okay, so let's get one more card. Maybe two in regards to this connection. What's it all about? What's the dynamic right now? Temperance. Okay, so I feel like there's something that might need to be healed between you and this other person. Okay, uh, some kind of solution that needs to be resolved or some some kind of problem that needs to be resolved or a solution needs to be had a middle ground needs to be found that's what i'm hearing and you have the moon okay so you have the moon twice you have the moon twice so pisces and sagittarius so i just have to throw that out there um wow okay and you have sag here because look at the symbol look at this little i, I think it's a minotaur right Wow, okay, so a lot of Sag and Pisces energy twice. Right here confirmed it, okay? So there's a there's a, a solution that needs to be had. I feel like you're confused about this connection, about what to do about it, okay? I feel like a middle ground. There's no middle ground here. You're trying to find what that middle ground is. Because when you consider the two cups, right? This is alchemical energy. Um Alchemy meets in the middle, right? You have two opposing forces that kind of mesh and blend and form some kind of melange. But at the end of the day, they meet somewhere in the middle to form a middle ground. Okay, consider uh, the two colors in alchemy are red and blue. And when you reach that crown chakra in the middle, okay, red and blue make purple. Purple is the color of the crown chakra, right? So I'm looking at this like there is a healing, there is a... 
a balance that needs to be had between you and this person. You're deciding what to do. You're not sure you need a solution to the problem between this situation or in this connection. Um, I feel like you can't decide. You're undecided. But you're trying to find a middle ground so that way you can. <laughs> okay, if that makes sense. Um, the temperance is a healing card. So I'm thinking there's something that needs to be healed in this connection as well. Um, I see sometimes a hidden two of cups in in the temperance card, okay? Because she's holding the two cups. And remember when I was talking about the crown chakra or like a, a leveling up of some sort, like that meeting of the middle, right? Look at the crown on her head. So that is a symbol of enlightenment. You'll see it in a lot of like classical paintings of high-level beings like Jesus and Buddha and all that good stuff. So I feel like um, this connection is very spiritual, okay? That's the vibe that I'm getting. There's a spiritual connection here between you and this person, but you can't decide what you want to do about it. You're very confused with the moon card. Um, again, this could be vice versa. That that could be them. Maybe they're confused about the connection and they don't know how to handle it. Uh, but you have the moon, and that is, you know intuitive energy very dreamy dreamlike energy okay it also speaks about emotions and you know the same applies in this card okay so it speaks of your emotions things that need to be brought from the depths to the surface for healing okay so sometimes with this energy especially there's something in it that needs to come back to the surface for healing and for purging okay this card speaks to self-reflection too. So I feel like there's something that you need to heal deep within. You need to bring that to the surface to alchemize it and understand it. So that way you can understand where you're headed in this connection. So I feel like this connection spiritual is forcing you to heal something. It's forcing you to face something about yourself. Causing you some self-reflection. You have the moon. Yeah, maybe some confusion. Moon twice. I'm also looking at this like you could be... Seeing this person in your dreams, okay, in the dream world, uh, with a 5D connection in some way. I feel like dreams, dreams are, are something that may be reoccurring dreams about them. Um, but the moon, you have to consider how it creates illusions and confusion for us sometimes. And we don't really see the way clear. We don't see the clear path ahead with the moon, Maybe that's why you're so confused and undecided about this connection. I think this connection really just confuses the heck out of you. But it's forcing you to acknowledge something within that needs healing. Okay, that's what I'm getting too. Um, I'm also getting forcing you to purge a lot of old things and face yourself. Maybe you don't know what direction you want to go with this connection. Maybe you're still trying to understand the connection. Kisses. Unconditionally loving, giving and receiving affection, falling in love. So I feel like you're falling in love with this person or you really have a deep unconditional bond and affection for this person. And it confuses the heck out of you. Maybe scares you a little bit with the moon energy. Okay. Maybe causes a little emotional conflict within yourself in regards to it but I feel like you you have this spiritual unconditionally loving affection for this person maybe this person mirrors you or faces you to see a lot of things within yourself vice versa maybe you do that to them but despite the mirroring aspect of it I feel with the temperance card um, I think there's still, there's love there, okay? Look at that. I said a spiritual connection, and yeah. Here we have the church in the background, okay? This union, there's this strong bond or connection, commitment, vows, promises, made. So it, it is definitely an eye-to-eye -eye thing let's get more information maybe we could find out like what is the confusion all about right why is this moon here so heavy 
Why are you purging things? Why do you need to, to bring he things up from the surface that need healed uh, in regards to this connection, right? Let's find out more information. Okay. Um, I'm hearing self-love and self-care with the Queen of Pentacles energy that is also Virgo Capricorn Taurus. So I feel like you need to to stabilize yourself too, to nurture yourself. I feel like there's some indecision about the person that you're dealing with. And it just creates instability for you. But you're trying to find that balance within because this connection is special, I'm hearing. It's special, but it confuses you at the same time. I'm hearing the conflict. And it's not stabilizing you when you should feel stable. You want to feel stable. Maybe falling in love is making you scared. And um, maybe falling in love or loving them so much scares you. Okay? Or maybe you think you're falling in love and it scares you. That's what I'm getting from this. So this is definitely a love connection. This is a bond, a union, okay? A, a joining of forces. We have the two cups pouring into each other. I feel like it's it's a, it's a mutual exchange, but there's some kind of um, unknown about it. Mystery, okay? Mystery. But intuitively, okay, because we have the moon, as she's intuition intuitively it's you, i feel like intuitively you already know what the answer is about this connection you know what this is okay you know how you know what this is like you you in your mind or your heart or for whatever reason i'm hearing there's a label for it you know what the label is and only you would be able to know what that is i couldn't tell you but i feel like you would know what the label is and intuitively I, I don't know why i'm hearing you might struggle to acknowledge what that is or face it or call it for what it is out loud okay or say what it is like admit it to yourself what that connection is okay i just saw something guys 11 11 okay a spiritual union and connection, 11-11. I said the Two of Cups is hidden in this, right? I feel like there's a need to admit what it is, okay? Own it, accept it, acknowledge it. 11-11, uh, that is a spiritual number, spiritual card. You have the 33 as well. Um, 11, 11 could be a twin flame if you subscribe to that belief, okay, or soulmate, but this is some kind of strong bond, okay, that's what this connection is. So we want to ask what the lesson is, right, what is the lesson? What is the lesson, what is to be learned from this connection situation for stack number one viewers? What is the lesson to be learned here with this person? See it from a higher perspective. Okay, eagle eyes. There's a need to look at it, not from a 3D perspective, but a 5D. Like I said, I, I was getting the vibes that this person maybe you have a lot of dreams about them maybe they visit you in dream state you know i could even go as far as saying maybe they telepathically communicate with you especially if you have that kind of spiritual bond or connection you might be sending messages to each other in a 5d way okay so the lesson is to look at it from a, a not a logical perspective but one that's based on intuition because you have all this moon energy right So I'm going to grab another card in regards to what the connection is. Uh, or I'm sorry, not what the connection is, what the lesson is behind this connection. I'm sorry. So what is the lesson behind this connection? What's to be learned from this? Maybe this connection is showing you what's possible. 
right? Maybe the connection is showing you that it, there's a lot much, there's much more to it than what physically is on the surface. Okay, uh, it's a lot deeper. I'm hearing a lot deeper than you think. It's the Six of Pentacles. So reciprocity, equal energy exchange here with the Six of Pentacles. I'm hearing it's not, it's mutual, okay? The feeling is mutual. You're feeling the spiritual connection and bond with this person. You're trying to figure it out. And the lesson here is to see it from a higher perspective. Don't look at it from a 3D level, but to... Three D, yeah. Look at it from more of a spiritual lens, because what you feel, they probably feel too. I'm getting that from the Six of Pentacles. This is this is a a, a connection. I feel that defies the three D. Okay. That, that's why we have the third eye here. I already mentioned that with the temperance. And then we have the eye. Okay. The, the hawk or the eagle, falcon. Those are symbols of looking at things from a higher perspective. It's not, it's not anything that can be comprehended on a physical level. Okay. The six of pentacles shows that the feeling is mutual or there's an equal energy exchange here. That there's give and take. Right. So I feel like this is saying to me, I don't know why I'm hearing learn to flow with it. Learn to flow, learn to trust the connection. Okay? Learn to trust the connection. That's what I'm hearing from this because you see how she's handing money out, right? Like she's being generous. She's... Trusting that the generosity that she's sharing is going to be, you know, used in a, in a way that, I guess, is going to help, right? So if you're giving some of your energy to this connection, maybe you're wondering if it's going to go anywhere or result to anything, you know? That's why the vacillation here, the very soon decide what you want so it comes to you now. I feel like you're wondering if the relationship is reciprocal or if the feelings are reciprocated. But if there's a spiritual connection here or bond here and you're visiting each other, your energy is connecting with each other in the 5D, then this Six of Pentacles is telling me that, yeah, it's not just in your head, okay? That's what I'm hearing. It's not just in your head. So what to do about this let's find out how should you approach this what to do about this connection let's find out stack number one what should stack number one viewer do about this connection what is to be done about it how to approach it i guess <gasps> alone but not lonely okay so I feel like um, you might be separated from them. I don't know why I'm hearing that. I feel like you love them unconditionally, but you might be apart from them. Um, you're trying to look at the situation from a higher perspective in the meantime. I mean, that's a possibility, not being with them at present, right? Um, it says you're you're without them. Like, I'm, I'm hearing solitude alone. Yes, you're alone. You're without them, but you're not lonely. Maybe because there's this connection in the spirit realm, right? Um, solitude I'm hearing um, like stepping back retreating all right taking a break from them or from the connection physically but not in the three not in the 5d maybe maybe separated in the 3b 3d but not in the 5d and I'm sorry if I'm talking really fast but I'm getting a lot of a lot of thoughts uh, flowing right now so I'm getting the vibe that you are separated right now from each other you're, you might be physically 3D level alone, right, without them, but you're not lonely. And the reason you're not lonely is because you still feel them lingering around you, okay? Their, their energy field is still with you or around you or 
attached to you in some way. I feel like you're healing from the connection. You're still sending them love. Look, look how she's blowing kisses into the wind. She's blowing kisses into the wind, still sending unconditional love because there's a spiritual bond. She acknowledges that she knows this, it exists. You're trying to stabilize yourself and heal yourself. Okay, in the midst of maybe your solitude and the same way with them, maybe they're trying to find balance because Six of Pentacles is a card of balance, right? And harmony, this is also that energy with the temperance. So there's a harmony and a balance that needs to be had here. I think you're both trying to find it separately on your ends. And um, I still feel even though the both of you might be alone doing your own thing, and finding solitude, peace, and retreat. And sanctuary, I'm also hearing. So quiet place, right? Self-reflecting, I'm also hearing from this. So while you're doing all of that, you're, you're still, you still have a link, okay? That's what I'm hearing. Still have a string, and not in a bad way. Um, I'm just hearing like an etheric cord that connects you to this person in the dream world, and that's where you, you share. Okay, that's where you share and connect, I'm hearing. So let me grab one more card for this, what to do about it. Um, well, I didn't answer your question, did I? Um, <laughs> what to do about it. I feel like it's saying to keep working on yourself, right? Keep finding your healing, keep finding your balance. Keep, keep stabilizing yourself. It's okay to be away from them or apart from them for, for now, okay? It's okay to do that. So let me have one more card in regards to what to do about this connection. Water. Okay. Water. I like that. That's um, Cancer Pisces Scorpio energy, obviously. So I feel like it's saying just spend time with yourself. Okay. Keep doing what you're doing. It's okay to heal alone. Water is very healing energy. Obviously, we have that in the temperance. All right. She has one foot in the water. Um, you have Piscean energy here with the moon, moon, lots of water energy. So I think what it's saying is just to continue to continue to embrace or, or get in touch with your emotions. All right. Learn, learn them. Uh, honor your feelings. Okay. Is what I'm hearing. You have the Lotus energy. Continue to transform, right? Continue to transform and alchemize those things within yourself, Continue to do your own work, your own spiritual work on you in the midst of the solitude and separation. That's that's pretty much all you can do right now. And that's probably the best course of action. Okay? Healing yourself is also ultimately going to heal the connection. So let me grab your final oracle card here. To sum all this up for you. Stack one. I think it's beautiful. I think you're seeing things from a higher perspective i think you're learning the lesson of how to look at it from a different lens you're continuing to heal so keep doing that all right you're finding that balance and reciprocity equal give and take not you know just in your outside environment but also within i'm also hearing you're learning to be kind to yourself okay so let's grab a oracle card to sum this up for you um, and I also want to say, continue to send the unconditional love if that's what feels right to you, okay? Because as you as you send that love, you're also healing yourself by doing that because you're not holding on to any resentment or animosity, okay, about the disconnect or the distance between you or the separation, okay? So just stay in that high vibration because that is ultimately what's helping you heal too, all right? Not holding on to any negative energy about the connection. Look at that. Goals, progress, that's right. Progress is positive and personal goals will be achieved. So keep doing what you're doing. Make progress in your own journey, okay? Make progress in your own journey because ultimately, like I said, the healing that you do for yourself is ultimately going to heal the connection. Work on you. Reach your goals while you're apart doing your own. Do your own thing. Focus on you while you're, you know, experiencing this alone time. Focus on you. Work on your goals. Achieve your things, the things you want to do, your dreams, okay? Um, 
the more leveling up you do for yourself, the more healing you do for yourself, the better off you're going to be in the long run, whether you reunite with this connection or not. Okay, so just stay focused on you is what I'm hearing for stack number one. So if you feel this connects with you, please do let me know because I love hearing from everybody. And it helps me know that I'm conveying the messages the way I need to, especially if it's reaching you, okay? So that was stack number one. I'm going to move right into number two. Okay, move this out of the way. You picked 11, the cats. 11 is also a master number. If you pick this reading number two, um, I suggest maybe Googling that angel number and getting some more information in regards to it to add additional messages to your reading, okay? I'm gonna grab a sip of water here. Okay. This is your card stack. I'm going to move this off to the side because I want to ask about the connection first. And for that, I'm going to use your Roman's Angel card stack here. Basically, we want to know what what is this connection for stack number two viewers? What is this all about? Okay, what's between you? What's this connection for stack number two viewers? What is this all about? What's between them? Flirt. Okay. Extend your lighthearted energy to others. <laughs> okay. Flirtatious energy. Maybe getting to know someone. Maybe getting to know someone. Maybe exploring a connection right now. So let's get some more information. Maybe a new connection, right? Maybe it's just, uh, maybe it's just banter, right? flirty banter, sexual banter between you and the other person right now. Um, I don't know if you're doing this online or texting or at work or something like that. So let's get more information in regards to this connection. What is this exactly? The King of Cups. Okay, so it could be water energy. could be you. Um, Cancer Pisces Scorpio. It says it's a good thing to be rich and to be strong, but it is... A better thing to be loved okay so somebody's flirting looking for love I think all right but consider the the king of cups energy kind of knows what he wants when it comes to love I don't think he plays around too much when it comes to love I think he's more mature in his loving energy okay the queen of pentacles okay so <laughs> I feel like this is you and another person and they're just showing up um, I think the the king and the queen are showing up as a couple Okay, so Virgo Capricorn Taurus, it says riches are not from abundance of worldly goods, but from a contented mind is the quote. So I think, and I know my candle just went out, um, and I'm going to grab another one to replace it because why not, right? I honestly think that this king and queen of pentacles are a kind of like, I don't know, they're, they're coming together. One is rational. The other one is like more in his feelings or her feelings, right? It's like the balance of uh, logic and reason versus emotion. So, okay, I think I know what this is saying. <laughs> this connection, I think... I think that the the head because the practicality comes practicality comes from the Queen of Pentacles. Okay, she's more practical. She's like, what makes sense? What does what makes sense? The King of Cups energy is more like I'm feeling it. This is what I'm feeling. I'm in my feelings, and that's okay. I accept it. I embrace that. So part of me wonders if you are like this vacillating between this new energy or this person that you just met, and you're flirting with them, but it's like. You're trying to stay practical without letting it get to your heart space. Okay, that's what I'm hearing. Could be the other way around. Maybe the other person's flirting with you. Um, is trying to stay grounded and not allow the heart or the emotions get the best of them. Okay, it's like I really like this person, but I don't know. I don't know if I want to let myself go there with them. 
Maybe there's trust issues. The reason why I say trust issues is because of the cat's card. The cats are, you know, very aloof, sometimes indifferent. Um, they're tricksters. All right. They can, in this deck, they can speak of treachery and slyness and maybe a false friend or someone who's not showing who they truly are, maybe pretending to be somebody they're not. So I'm looking at this like, I think you're questioning them because you see the pensive look on her face. Look at her the way she's, she has her hand on her chin like, mm, I don't know about you. I don't know about you. What is it that you want from me, right? So you could, um, you could be questioning their motives with you. And it's like, you have a lot of love to give, right? And it's like, you want to give it, but I feel like part of you is holding back or they might be holding back because they don't know what your intentions are. They don't know if you're being honest with them or forthright or I guess um, I'm hearing full disclosure, right? You don't know if they're being true to you or to I'm hearing not being true to them. Maybe they're not being their true selves. That's what I'm hearing too. Maybe they're not being who they say they are. Or maybe they're not, maybe they're pretending to be somebody or something that they're not. And I'm also feeling a little hesitancy coming from the Queen of Pentacles. And it's just because of her demeanor in the card, right? So you're hesitating on extending, I feel like extending this connection past the flirting stage because you don't know if this person is really being true or truly being themselves. Like there's something off about them, I think. I don't think the King of Cups is the kind of energy that takes um, love casually, okay? So that could be you. Yeah, That could be your energy. You're like, you know what? I'm not going to give this person my heart. I'm not going to let my walls down. I'm going to be practical about this whole thing because I don't want to just hand over my heart to the wrong person. So the flirting is like what's happening. It could be on social media. It could be you know, by other platforms that you're having this connection somehow, but you're questioning their intentions with you. Maybe they're, you know, questioning their, your intentions with them. I don't know, but there's a little bit of a, of a hesitancy I'm feeling coming from this. And the King of Cups is like, I could easily take this to the next level, but I'm trying to keep my head on straight, says the Queen of Pentacles. One of you is super in your feelings. The other one might also just be really practical. Or it could be a debate between those two energies within one of you. Okay, that's what I'm getting from that. So let me grab more information in regards to... Well, that kind of flipped over. I think I'm going to take that. One more card in regards to um, what this connection is or what this is all about. Okay, we have the Cupid's arrow and we have the clock. Uh -huh. It says, need, need time, take time in cycles or something. Time to heal, progress. Then it says, have faith, love is coming, surprise, invitation or meeting. Maybe, again, I said, whoa, I said hesitation, right? Okay, I said hesitation. Um, so yeah, it's like you need time to think about this connection is what I'm hearing because you're hesitant. You don't know if you can trust them. And I get that vibe from the cats. Okay. This is like a new love, I think. A new love interest is on the way or is has approached you. It's a lot of flirting, a lot of banter, going back and forth. I'm feeling uh, sexual chemistry, attraction, I feel, from the King of Cups with the queen of pentacles especially i feel like he sees you as attractive you see him as attractive um it is a mutual thing as far as the attraction and the flirting it's there but you need time like i feel like you're not trusting because maybe of something that happened in the past um and you have your i think i, I don't know i'm feeling the guard up from the queen of pentacles so um you could have your guard up because of things that happened in the past. Maybe you're still trying to heal from a previous relationship based on what this clock says. Um, maybe you see that this could be a potential love interest, but you're 
you're hesitant. Maybe the love or the, the affection that you feel with that King of Pentacles has taken you by surprise because Cupid Arrow, you know, it has no, um, it has no, it has, doesn't discriminate, I guess. <laughs> Cupid Arrow, arrows do not discriminate, okay? So let's grab um, one card here for more information in regards to this connection. Okay, yeah, um, Queen of Pentacles wants to find stability, right? You want somebody stable, reliable. The Queen of Pentacles certainly would. You're not certain if this person is a reliable energy. Okay, you don't know if they're reliable like that. Because the constancy card is that stable, grounded, reliable, you know, sturdy energy. It takes a lot to shake that kind of foundation, okay, with the constancy card. So it's like you're solid within yourself. You're not trying to shake up your foundation, I think, for a new love unless they're the real deal. That's what I'm hearing from this. I feel like you can't trust that they are the real deal, though. Yeah, like maybe you you haven't figured them out. So let's get more information in regards to this connection. It makes you want to do another reading. Like, what's their intentions towards you, right? Um, another pick a card. Because... All right, so this connection is definitely, I feel like there's attraction here for sure. Um, but there's a hesitancy from somebody because they don't want to get hurt. And it's because they've, they've gotten to such a solid place, right? They don't want to shake that up. You're not sure if this person's worth shaking it up. Okay, I'm also hearing that. The Four of Swords. Yeah, Four of Swords is like... A falling back I hear maybe you feel that you have to step back a little bit retreat I don't know why this word keeps coming up it came up for stack number one to retreat because that's what this is about retreat and healing removing yourself from a situation um, taking a time out maybe the flirting was really heavy the attraction was really strong um, but you couldn't figure this person out so you felt you had to take a step back Right? You needed a timeout before you got your heart involved with the King of Cups. That's what I'm hearing from that. So I'm going to move these over because I want to get... This is. I feel like this is a connection that you can't figure out. That this is a connection that is mysterious with those cats. It struck your heart. Like, it took you by surprise, I want to say. I'm sorry for the blur. I feel like the connection took you by surprise with the Cupid arrows. You need time. Maybe that's why the Four of Swords here is here. You need time to heal. It says take time to heal. You're not sure if you're ready to get involved with this person. Maybe you took a break from them too. Maybe it's due to other factors like previous relationships that you're not sure if you're ready to get involved again. Or maybe you took a time out from them. Okay. Maybe they weren't giving you full disclosure. They weren't being completely honest and open with you. Um, maybe your intuitive knowing with that that eye there, okay, kind of tipped you off in a way where you're like, eh, something feels off about this connection or this person. I kind of need to fall back. I need to step away to ground myself once more in this queen of pentacles energy and the constancy in order to really see this connection okay from a higher level or for lens in order to truly know how to to approach it okay because this four of swords is going to fall back step away to meditate okay to think about it to contemplate to ponder to self-reflect on the person the situation the entire thing okay Despite the way you felt, I think there's mutual, like, um, attraction there. But somebody needed to fall back because it, it, didn't, it didn't make sense. That's what I'm hearing. It didn't make sense. Or something about it doesn't add up. Okay? So let me grab um, for what is the lesson, right? Let's see. What is the lesson here between you right now? Or why? what lesson is this person bringing to you at the moment? What lesson is this person bringing via this connection? What is the lesson here? Mm -hmm. 
moon. Take note of intuitive messages. Okay, to follow your own discernment. It's teaching you that you need to listen to yourself. I'm hearing from that. You need to listen to yourself. Again, the moon is in stack number one. Okay, and that's intuitive energy. Uh, following your, you know, paying attention to the way that you feel. Maybe even getting guidance from that. Okay. So you got to do what's right for you. If some feel, something feels off, no matter how you feel, all right, something feels off about the person or the situation, it's, you know, that's okay to put uh, healthy boundaries up and step away if you need to, to regroup, right? So let's get more information in regards to what is the lesson here um, behind this connection. Okay, it says the reward of a thing well done is to have done it. Three of Pentacles. Okay, so I feel like I feel like what the lesson is 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 you, because the Three of Pentacles is about work, right? Getting recognized and, and acknowledging your skills, your talents, putting those gifts to work for you in a sense where you can build upon something, right? Working together. Um, I feel like you this lesson has taught you how to or this person has taught you how to make your intuition work for you okay this like i said it could be a work situation because i was i was hearing that like back and forth work banter flirting back at uh, back and forth at work um It does take work to listen to your intuition, right? It does. Because sometimes we doubt ourselves. We don't always trust it. We don't always trust the intuitive messages and nudges that we get. But it takes work to truly follow them and follow them in faith. So I look at this like this is you working on that discernment. This person triggered you to listen to your intuition in some way. And to, I'm also hearing gain a higher, like, gain a higher perspective of situations and people and that three of pentacles though. Okay, I'm hearing it. it's taught you to listen to your intuition in regards to people that come in and out of your life, all right? Because the Three of Pentacles speaks of more than one person involved in a situation, right? Um, so I'm feeling like the people in your surroundings, the lesson is that this person taught you how to intuitively listen and be nudged and be guided for your own discernment in regards to the people around you or the people you're surrounded by or the people that you you come across right it says take note of intuitive messages that's exactly what the moon does it taps you into your feelings it reveals you know there's a mystery about it okay there's there's um with this energy it's like i don't know how i know but i know right So when the three of pentacles come in, comes in, it's like, there's people in my surrounding. I know how to discern. I know how to listen to that little voice inside my head when it comes to people around me. The mystery of this person or of this connection taught you how to do that. And if you're going and you're retreating from them, that even helps you tap into that energy even more. So you can be even more discerning through your intuition. So what to do? What to do about this connection, right? Or how to approach this or moving forward, I guess. What, what should you do about this connection? Let's find out what there is to do about it. What is there to do about this connection? Free yourself. Let it go. 
I, I just think it's not for you. Um, I mean, just based on that card and the treachery card, okay, with the cats. I don't know if this person can be trusted. And I think you have you had maybe started to develop feelings for them, but you knew something was off. And maybe you're still trying to free yourself from the connection in some way. Maybe you're trying to heal yourself from the connection. It says liberation, free yourself. Yeah. I feel like something... Something was lost here, something, you know, died here, or not not an actual literal death, but I'm feeling the mysterious energy of the cat. It's like somebody wasn't who they claimed themselves to be, and you're finally realizing that now. And your your antenna, okay, I'm hearing your antennae or ten I don't know how you say it. Your antenna go up goes up now. Like you have, you have a radar now because of what you experienced with this person. They taught you how to, you know, have the antenna go up in regards to people's motiva motives or agendas or underlying motives, I guess. It's like you can scope it out now as a result of having experienced this. I don't know what went down with this situation here between you and this person, but something about it just, ugh, it was, it was um, feeling like a knot. I'm hearing a knot in your stomach in some way. There's just something you couldn't shake, okay, is what I'm hearing about this person. And you're trying to let you're trying to disconnect from it. You're trying to let it go. I feel like there were feelings there, though, and that's the messed up part. Um, I'm hearing catfished. I don't know if anybody got catfished. I know that's not going to be for everybody, but I feel like there's a possibility that maybe some of you might have gotten catfished and because the person wasn't really revealing themselves to you or being true or open and honest about themselves or who they really were, um, something really nudged you to retreat from that situation, put it away, let it go, squash it, um, and free yourself from it. So I feel like if you're in that situation, I feel like if the person isn't truly being um, or giving you full disclosure, okay, you may have to, I guess, put your foot down with that Queen of Pentacles energy and free yourself, I'm feeling, as far as like, you know, what to do about it, how to approach it. It's telling you, plain and clear, to free yourself from it. There's something off about this. Like, I also want to say, um, set boundaries, okay, up front. Right away, say what you, you know, tell the person what you need. And if they can't comply in regards to like being open and honest, then maybe it's time to let go, right? If you need that honesty, if you need that full disclosure, don't don't deny or how would you say, I guess don't deny yourself the 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 right to have that. I mean, you are worthy of honesty, of people's honesty and true intentions, right? You're worthy of that. So you teach people how to treat you, right? Um, and if they can't deliver that, then you have every right to free yourself and walk away. Yeah, look at that. Boom, voice. You need to say and demand what you need. Put it out there. Speak your truth. Stay authentic to yourself. Um, say what you need if you're still talking to them. If they can't deliver you know, on that, then it might be time to just cut those cords, okay? So let me grab one final oracle. What to do about it, speak up. Tell them what you need. If not, it's like you have to go, right? Like there's a need to want to free yourself from the, the connection because it's not going to really make progress if there's no honesty behind it or with it, right? Uh, if there's no open conversation or how can it progress if there is no conversation, right? Maybe the person, I'm hearing also somebody could have ghosted. I don't know why sometimes I get that vibe with the four of swords. 
I feel like somebody left the other person hanging. I don't know. Maybe didn't get to speak their voice. Somebody definitely retreated to kind of like, you know, ground themselves or distance themselves. And I think part of it is because there was no honesty there. Um, or full disclosure, somebody was maybe pretending to be somebody they weren't, not really revealing themselves, or they were wearing a mask of some sort, and there was just too much mystery, okay? Too much mystery behind it. And I think the what to do is saying, you've listened to your intuition in regards to how you handle people or not how you handle people but how you handle situations with people you are more focused now on using your intuition to discern situations with others that is what the lesson has been and that's what you've learned and now it's like okay i know how to handle that those situations now and moving forward what you need to do or what you know spirit is saying to do is to free yourself By speaking up, speaking your truth, staying authentic to you, to yourself, set boundaries and set, you know, say, hey, this is what I need. I need this from the situation. You got to be open and honest and upfront about that, of, you know, upfront and center at first to avoid any confusion later down the road. And if this person can't deliver on what you need, then it might be time to just cut, cut it away, right? So... I'm sorry. One card here for your final oracle. I felt like I just went on a little rant there. Um, final oracle for number two. Let's sum this up. Aha. Be prepared to be renewed after a period of crisis. So, liberation. That is the phoenix energy. Rising from the ashes, okay? Rising from the ashes. Letting this go, freeing yourself, renewing yourself. Okay, having overcome something and evolved from it. So I feel like you evolved from this situation or you're on your way there in regards to rising above it. Okay, that's what the Phoenix is telling me. You're freeing yourself from this and you're letting go of the connection or something like that or maybe putting it aside for now to work on you because the phoenix is about rebirth regeneration renewal okay and it's alchemy as well it's an alchemical symbol so i feel like you're letting this go in some way or you're you're thinking you want to let this go and free yourself now i feel like you've also learned how to use your voice number two and speak up. All right, so I hope this helped you, number two. I'm going to clean this up for you. Um, again, listen to your, you know, continue to listen to your own intuition because I think that that has helped you discern things and situations with people. Um, and that is a very powerful tool, okay, in your journey to make your intuition front and center. So if it connects, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll get on to number okay three. stack number three I have your cards here you chose the queen I'm gonna put her off to the side and incorporate her into the reading as we go along I'm gonna start now with your romance angels because we want to ask first like what is this connection all about right we want to know for stack number three viewers what is this connection all about okay this flew I'll take that one. Heart to heart conversations. Honestly discuss your feelings with each other. So this is definitely a heart to heart connection. Maybe somebody that you hope would listen to you. Maybe you want them. Yeah, maybe you want them to listen to you. Maybe you're hoping that they will listen to you. But I think it's a connection that is requiring honesty and openness. Okay, that's what I'm getting from this. And you have the universe, which is actually the world card. So there's some kind of completion of a cycle or a lesson, right? A graduate, okay, a graduation and the two of cups. Some kind of graduation I'm hearing. Um, not a literal graduation, but more like a 
up leveling of yourself or between you and the connection right so heart to heart conversations honestly discuss your feelings with each other here's the two of cups this is the water flowing in and out of each other's cup right and sharing mutually i think this is a i'm, I'm hearing soulful connection all right A healing connection like you fill my cup I fill yours that's what I'm getting from this okay so that's this type of connection um, and one that has come full circle in some way I'm also hearing okay so I want more information in regards to what this connection is all about between you and them so this is a soulmate connection with the Two of Cups, uh, an eye-to-eye -eye connection, a heart-to-heart -heart connection. This is, okay, I'm hearing life partner, okay? Life partner material. Somebody who somebody who you have, somebody who, who's taking things to the next level Who's helping you take things to the next level, whether it be within yourself or within a physical connection. Okay, so let's grab one more card in regards to what this connection is all about. Whoa. <laughs> Alright, hand of cards. Take a chance. Risk. This is being strategic. Options. Not showing your hand. Maybe gambling. I feel like you want to take a chance on this connection because there is... I'm hearing mutual bond or connection or... I'm, I'm seeing this too. Okay. I feel like you want them to hear you out. Um, could be vice versa. Maybe they want you to hear them out because there's something about this connection I'm hearing that is worth saving or worth working on, worth talking about, worth healing, worth connecting and succeeding and achieving in. Like there's something to be won here. Maybe they want to win your heart. Maybe you want to win theirs. Maybe you're willing to take a chance or risk um, your heart because you feel that they're worth it or vice versa, okay? Um, sometimes there's choice in this card and there's options to be made or choices to be had. Maybe they don't want to fully give you their heart. And the reason why I say that is because it says not showing your hand, right? I feel like... And I'm sorry, I feel like there's not a lot of light. I could be wrong though. Maybe it's just my phone. But I do feel like... You want to take a chance with them. You want to risk, you know, your heart with them. Or you're willing to. Maybe it's the other way around. But um, you feel that there's part of them that they maybe aren't. Maybe it's part of them that they're not fully being um, open with. Okay? I don't know. And the reason why I'm getting that also is because of this energy. You see him? He's like holding back. Not that he's indifferent, but... It's like he's resisting a little bit, right? It's like this person is maybe resisting the connection here in some way. You could be resisting it. But there's something there's something really valuable here in this vibe, okay? Between you and the other person because I'm hearing mutual, the feeling's mutual. The water is pouring into this cup and then going back into the other cup. You have the sun energy. It's shining down on the entire situation. There's success here. There's leveling up here between you. There's the potential to take this to the next level and really succeed in this connection. But somebody's a little resistant to it. I'm not quite sure why. Um, because the love is mutual is what I'm seeing. You want to take a risk or they want to take a risk. It's like, you know, don't, let's just go all in. That's what I'm hearing. Um, it's worth going all in in this connection. So let's grab one more card.
maybe you want to dive all in. All right. So you have the house, which does speak of stability, okay? Home life, family, you know, think of the Four of Wands with this as well because of the four pillars there, right? It's very reminiscent of the Four of Wands energy. So yeah, this is definitely soulmate, okay? Because I see an 11-11 in this card. I don't know about you. But this is definitely soulmate energy, right? And then you have the Two of Cups, which also confirms that. It could be, you know, Twin Flame if that's what you believe. Um, and the Two of Cups, definitely there's... I feel the resi I felt a little bit of the resistance and maybe because of the connection being so strong, right? There's a little bit of resistance there, but it's like, I want to build a foundation with you. I want to, I see myself building a foundation with you, having this strong connection with you for future stability um, together. Like I see us buying a house. I see us, you know, moving in together. Like, I feel like that's this kind of energy of this reading. So that's what the connection is. This is something that with the, with the house card is something you want to build for or build upon for the long term, right? With the universe, this person could be overseas. Um, cause when you think of the world, it could be across the world, you know, maybe a different part of the world. So I have to throw that out there just in case. I'm also hearing with the two of cups, um, this connection could be something where like, you know, the, the conversations sometimes they get lost in translation. Okay. Heart to heart conversations get lost in translation because of the distance or because of the means of communication. Um, I'm picking up with, for whatever reason, these three cards, the means of communication, um, is at a distance or could be, uh, through, you know, FaceTime, texting, social media. Uh, sometimes when you're texting and things are written, they do get lost in translation. You don't hear the inflections in people's voice to understand, you know, where they're coming from or the tone in their voice to actually, um, you know, not misconstrue things. You know what I mean? And maybe that's why the conversations, you guys need to really talk it through or have better communication because sometimes things get lost in the sauce there. Okay, that's what I'm hearing. But this is definitely a connection that is, I feel, um, worth working on, okay? And it has potential to have a strong sense of stability and love formed there, okay? You have the queen. She is divine feminine energy. Again, if we're talking about twin flame stuff, okay, with the house and the two of cups, um, I could easily see that this is, you know, you're the divine feminine to them or vice versa, Um you know, this is about fertility, accomplishing things. Of course, we have the, the world card of the universe here. Uh, fertility, abundance, fruitfulness, right? So there's potential here. There's serious potential here, okay? With the queen card because she's all positive energy. Um, she also has a hawk in her, in the card. I don't know if you can see that. So it's kind of like um, a higher perspective, right? There's a higher connection here. Like, I feel like you're, maybe your higher self and their higher self connects in some way with each other or, I don't know why I'm getting that. Um, I'm hearing spiritual, I guess a spiritual connection between you, okay? So let me grab a playing card. Okay. The five of wands. So again, like the bickering, okay? Like the need to communicate is what I was hearing. Like there's a there's a little bit of a resistance, maybe because there's difficulty communicating or understanding each other sometimes. And I was already picking that up. So the five of wands does kind of speak about that, like the the conflicts with each other. Some of them are really petty sometimes. It's not always like big conflicts or disagreements but you just don't always see eye to eye and you're not expected to you're a different person they're a different person and you know you're not always going to agree um and you don't have to either you know like that's the kind of vibe i'm getting from it it's like but once you can figure out the communication this is this is top-notch stuff you have the universe you have the world very successful energy you have the queen very fertile uh fruitful energy as well you have the two of cups um, and it's like, if you could just let go of your, some of your petty differences with the five of wands, right? This is, this is a connection that has a strong bond and possibility for a very strong lasting foundation. Okay. 
So I almost want to say with the hand of cards, don't be afraid to talk to each other. Um, don't be afraid to tell you tell each other how you feel with the heart to heart here. Have that heart to heart. I think it's needed, right? Um, because the connection is strong. It is intense. There is love here. There is a kindred spirit connection and vibe and soulmate uh, energy here. Um, it's worth taking a risk. It's worth talking it out. It is worth, you know, putting aside your petty differences to to form the, a stronger bond and connection with each other. So what is the lesson here between you and this person? What is the lesson between you and this person? Number three. What is the lesson here between you and this connection? Emotions, connecting with emotions, being um, open and vulnerable with the heart space and how you feel. Um, I think this connection is teaching you how to express emotion, okay? Because you have the water energy here. And this could be water energy, so Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio you could be dealing with. Um, so that could be you, that could be them. But if anything, it's helping you get in touch with how you feel. Okay, and that's, you know, helping you understand how you feel, not being afraid to show the other person how you feel or vice versa. So let's get one more card in regards to what the lesson is between, that's a lot of cards. I just need one. And I'm going to point out that somebody was very mean in the comment section about like it was literally like that many cards falling out and me not taking all of them. I will not pull that many cards if I don't need them. Okay, I just need one. Now, if they flip over, absolutely. Okay, but I just need one. And even if they did flip all over, I would only take the ones that flipped over. I wouldn't take the whole stack. Okay, so whatever was on top or face first is the one I would take. So... Let me not get on a rant because the reading is beautiful. <laughs> um, and it's a shame that people in the comments, for whatever reason, cannot be understanding, right? It's like, whatever. Anyway, water energy. Let's see what what is the lesson. What is the lesson? Okay, so that one was hesitant. I'm going to take that one. The Six of Wands. Oh boy, yeah, overcoming obstacles, okay? Because the Six of Wands is a card of triumph and in order to have triumph over something, you had to overcome something, right? And a lot of times it's, you know, something that can be tumultuous or difficult. Um, consider that the Six of Wands is a soldier having returned from war. So you overcome something. So it's like overcoming. I feel like the lesson is overcoming the fear of sharing your emotions or being vulnerable or letting your guard down for somebody, okay? Um, and you, if you can connect, look, you have this sun energy twice. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so you have this beautiful sun energy that's just like shining and enlightening you on how you feel and you feeling that you can share this with that person and connect with how you feel and not be afraid to show it. Right. I feel like there's a need for, for that between you to share how you feel, not be afraid of the way you feel, overcome your fears. Okay. With the six of wands to embrace how you feel some people never you know they don't want to admit that they love somebody or they they don't want to admit how much they care for somebody like because it makes them vulnerable it puts them in a very delicate position right so i feel like this the lesson is how to be open how to be honest how to let your walls down how to be vulnerable how to share and express how you feel without fear of how the other person might perceive it or interpret it or whether they'll reciprocate or not right so let me grab um let me grab a card for what to do about this connection or situation well okay that says doable the key is within your grasp so what to do about the connection it's doable <laughs> you can do this you can share how you feel don't be afraid to share how you feel or let's hope that they're not afraid to share how they feel about you you know, the key or the answers are, you know, there within your grasp. Like, 
this is achievable. This connection is possible. You can say how you feel. Um, there's, yeah, there's, I feel sometimes I, I don't know why I'm hearing fear. Like, I feel like some of you are afraid of how that person might react by you being open and honest and just, you know, letting it all on the table. Okay. Um, the key, the key reveals things, right? It opens doors for us. So I feel like I feel like the minute you share how you feel or express yourself or, yeah, have that heart to heart, it's going to open up the floodgates, okay? And it's going to reveal a lot of things to the person or to you. All right, things maybe you didn't realize before or didn't know before. It'll, I think it's just going to smooth the path because the Six of Wands is there. Um... Which speaks of achievement and having overcome something and success, which makes me think that once you once you reveal how you feel, once how you sh once you share and you have that heart to heart, um, I almost feel like it's going to make things easier. It's it's not, and then you'll realize after you did it, oh, it wasn't as hard as I thought. Um, it wasn't as difficult as I thought it would be to share how I feel. Actually, it makes me feel better. Like, that's what I'm hearing from this. So, what what else to do about this connection, right? I think you need to reveal how you feel. Share your emotions. Help you overcome the fear of sharing them, too. Um, and reveal, you know, what's going on. Oh, yeah, fear. Again, I said the fear. The fear of failure. Okay, that's what I'm hearing. I think you're you're afraid of messing things up by saying how you feel or putting yourself out there or sharing it. Like, I feel like this card is saying you're afraid of falling hard. <laughs> okay, falling hard for this connection, possibly. That's what I'm getting from this energy here. Um, I think you can do it though. It's doable. It's. I feel like it wants you to share how you feel. It wants you to open up. All right. To each other. Let the emotions flow between you. Let the, the feelings flow. Put aside the petty differences or discuss them at least. I don't think this is saying that the relationship's going to end or for you to end the relationship as far as what to do about it. I think what it's saying is that honesty needs to be had. Things need to be revealed between you. Things need to open up between you. Like I said, the key opens up things. And reveal your fears to each other even with the failure card. Okay, I think the failure is scared. The failure card is, is showing more like fear to me. Um, the fear of failing in the relationship or failing to explain or to reveal yourself. All right. I think if you don't, if the conversations aren't had, then it can lead to failure. Okay, that's what I'm hearing from this. So what to do about it? Talk about it. Open, open up. Reveal yourselves to each other express yourselves to each other with this the lesson is trying to learn to express yourself say how you feel not hold it back or push it down that's the lesson the lesson is helping you express more of your authenticity your honesty your op being open with your heart with people rather than closing it up rather than suppressing it okay so i'm gonna grab a final oracle card for you. Whoa, okay. Two? That's fine, I'll take it. The devil and the key. Whoa, how do we have the key twice? Oh my gosh, didn't this happen in the other reading, guys? Yeah, we did. The other reading, um, one of the other readings I just did, I was feeling keys. 
before I even pulled cards that showed keys on them. And someone pointed that out to me because I didn't realize it until after I got that comment. <laughs> so, um, he says, new beginnings, directions, and adventures await for those ready to let go of the past. Take care immediately to avoid temptation and deceit. Well, I don't know. I don't know how this applies, to be honest. I feel like maybe this is, this is stuff you're letting go. Like this negative toxic energy. Okay. Because that's the thing. When we judge our new relationships based on our past failures, okay, it prevents us from truly being present, right? And connecting authentically. We end up having these preconceived notions, or maybe they won't understand. Maybe that'll scare them away if I show them how I feel and, you know, that kind of thing. I'm seeing this more like a, you know, previous past toxic situations. I don't think this is about deceit. I don't think there's a deceitful... There's no deceit in this card reading here at all. This is all good stuff, okay? So, I feel like don't fall into old patterns. That's what I'm hearing with this. Reveal, you know, get, drop those, those walls. Drop those masks, okay? Embrace new beginnings and new things and, and um, let go of the past, it's saying. Okay, so like I said, you have all this fruitful energy here with the queen too. She's ready to open her heart, okay, and expose it. She's love, all right? She's at that, that divine feminine energy and she's full of wisdom. So what did your, I also want to say with her energy, what is your heart telling you to do? Number two is about relationships, partnerships, decisions, right? Duality, finding balance in a situation. Um, so yeah, you have to decide to let your guard down a little bit, open up your heart, share how you feel, expose your, your heart a little bit, right? Um, to each other. Let go of the old patterning that you had, I think, with that devil energy. It could be Capricorn that you're dealing with too. And open the doors to new things, to new love, right? To new chapters. So I'll let you hear. Stack number three, if you feel this connects, please do let me know because I love hearing from everybody. Um, that's why I do this. So sending much love. Take care. Keep shining, everyone. Bye-bye. To book a personal reading, please email me or contact me on my Etsy shop, Instagram, and on Twitter. Thank you for watching and connecting. Keep shining, everyone.